Hello everybody and welcome back to the Router Cabinet build series. In this video, we're gonna get the doors made and that's about it really. So let's get going. So I've got the door styles and the door rails all machined up to 30 by 15 millimeters. And what I want to go through here is grain pattern on doors to give you a nice, a nice look once the door is assembled. So on here, I've drawn up two mock-up doors, which I'll draw some grain patterns on and we'll show you the difference when we're getting closer. So door number one, if you've got grain like this where you've got sort of swirly patterns and you see it bending out a little bit if you assemble a door so all the grain patterns are bending out like that and you can see even though the door is rectangular it looks fat it's just the way the grain patterns work and it sort of gives a weird illusion that the door is rounded rather than nice and elegant so Normally, I'll try and orient the grain so it's this way round, so that it gives the door a nice, I don't know, a nice shape to it. What's the name that sort of matches things to human bodies, you know, like... Pear. Pear? Pear shape, apple shape. Pear shape, yeah. Yeah. So this door looks, it's not a pear shape though, is it? It looks like a melon. <laughs> <laughs> melon shaped body. This one is a. Uh... it. <laughs> okay, so the way I cut this out of that one bit of timber has meant I've got a lot of repeat patterns in this. So I've got sort of like book matches going through all of these doors, but I've also got some pretty gnarly bits of tear out as well because I was a bit uh, overconfident with the thicknesser. So I think I'm going to go for something like that with both the door panels. Now you can see it's curving out here. So if I do something like that, like that, split them apart, that will be the two doors. And then I've just got to get the rails going across, which can just be out of any of this rubbish, really. So then, as in the previous episode, I'm just going to draw a mock groove on the inside of these to make sure that I put the groove on the correct side. So that'll be the bottom ones, which should make this the top. That doesn't really matter too much, so I'll just do a groove on the same side and then I can run them straight through. So a groove there. And then on these ones. And then I will number them as well. One, two, and eight. Face sides and face edges as well, so I know which one is the front and the outside edge of each door, so I don't end up creating an S-shaped frame. And then on this one, that's the bottom, so that would make this side seven, eight, face side down towards me. This one would be three, four, and then this one, one, two, face side out there, and five, five, six. Sorted. So now we need to cut a groove in these door panels, uh, sorry, in the styles for the door panel, which I'm going to be making out of this plastic stuff that I got from the local DIY supplier. This is four millimeters thick 
Uh, I accidentally picked up the one with the blue tint to it, which I'm not sure how it will look. But yeah, we need to cut a groove to four millimeters and then that will also dictate the size of the tenon, which I will show you a little bit later. So we're gonna do that with the slotting cutter, as I did in the previous episode to cut the groove for the back panel. And yeah, montage, I think. Okay, so when I'm cutting the grooves in these door panels, what's really important here is that I make note of where that face edge is or face side. That has either got to be facing up on all of my cuts or facing down on all of the cuts. And I need to make sure that all the components are do exactly the same thing. The reason for this is with this cutter that I've put in here, the little slotting cutter, I have adjusted that by eye to kind of midway through the thickness of this component. If that is, let's say it's three millimeters up from the table, that means that if I have the face side down on the table, then it's gonna be cutting three millimeters up from that. Now that isn't the middle of this component, but it won't matter too much because as long as the face sides are down on all of the components when I pass them through, it'll always be three millimeters from that front edge. Whereas if I'm flipping between them, some the face side are up, some are down, then on some of the components, the groove is gonna be three millimeters from the front, and then some it'll be three millimeters from the back and it won't line up. So seeing as I've got this pretty close, it shouldn't matter too much, but it's just good practice to make sure that face sides are always up or face sides are always down, making sure that I'm obviously cutting on that side where I've marked the groove each time. So the door panels are all cut out and I've switched the doors around because it means I get a nice book match in the middle where the two doors are gonna be joining as well, which will look pretty sweet. So now I'm gonna start cutting the mortises for the mortise and tenons that are gonna hold this frame together. Now I've been contemplating on how to do this. I've got three options essentially. First one is to chop it in, out with a chisel entirely. Second one is to drill it out and then chisel it. And then the third one is to do it on the router table, which involves dropping it onto the bit and then moving it forwards and backwards, which I don't really like doing and I wouldn't really recommend. So I think I'm gonna go for the second option with drill it out and then chisel it. The only issue I have here is the fact that this is a four millimeter wide groove and my wider chisel isn't gonna fit right down into that. So it's gonna be a bit weird getting the 3.2 millimeter one in there to sort of lever stuff out but we'll have to make do. So I need to start marking out for the mortises. I'm gonna do that with the marking gauge. Now I need to account for the, we've got a haunch it's coming down from the top 14 millimeters and then the actual tenon is going to be 20 millimeters. So I need to mark two lines here because the haunch is just gonna bottom out in the groove. So the actual bit I'm gonna be drilling out starts at 14 millimeters from the top and bottom. So a little line there. on the tops and bottom of them all. Carry up. Shut up. <laughs> and then the second one is going to be 20 on top of that, so it makes it 34. Wait, what? Oh, <laughs> cut them to the wrong size. <laughs> the rails should be 40 millimeters tall, but I've made them 30. So in that case, we are going to make the tenon thinking of the music. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> 25, which makes the actual tenon very small. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. <laughs> right, haunch is going to be 10 millimeters in that case. So I'm going to rescribe them to spite Rob because now he has to watch me do it again. 10 millimeters. 
damn it, I like the look of them being thicker. That's what happens when you rush. 10 from the top, and then 25, which makes the 10 and 15 millimeters. Such an idiot. Am I right, Rob? <laughs> no, I've cut that bit. I couldn't do it. <laughs> oh, the flack you'll get for it. Okay, so we got that. So that's fine. And then I need to mark out the locations for the middle one, which is up 150 from the bottom. <sighs> okay. There's my meter ruler. Now go through the tedious process of cutting all these mortises, cleaning them out with the chisel and getting them nice and square, flat and parallel on all the sides. I will see you on the other side. So the mortises are all cut and I've squared them off. They're all looking tidy in there. So it is now time to cut the tenons. Now these are going to go in 20 millimeters into the styles. So I'm gonna set the marking gauge to 20 millimeters on here. And I'm gonna scratch that round. I'll do number one first, just for continuity. And I'm only gonna do the even number, uh, sorry, the odd numbers for now, because that means I'm doing the left-hand side of each door. and then that should help me get the correct sizing afterwards. So set that to 20 millimeters. Um, ideally, I would do this round all of them and then come back to show you the next stage, but I'm just gonna show you the next stage now. Uh, so one is going into one. So to get the actual width of the tenon, what you're gonna want to do is set the marking gauge from the front edge to the front face of that mortise which is about there. Yep. And then working from the front face on the other component, scratch that around the top and down this side as well. And then I'll get mortise number one again. If you had a mortise gauge, you could do both of these at once. In fact, I do have a mortise gauge. I don't know why I'm doing it with this one, but there we go. Set it to the second wall and then do exactly the same thing. So you can see this does pretty much line up with the groove that's already in the component. But what it means is if there was any misalignment in the groove and thus the mortise in this one, then we've accounted for that by offsetting the tenon the correct way on the tenon component. So we've got line scratched around there, line scratched around there. The only thing I've got to add now is the uh, the haunch, which means measuring down from the top on this one to that point there, just where the haunch starts or where the haunch ends, and then scratch that round the top here. So you can see because of that groove, I'm getting a pretty small tenon out of this. In fact, I think I made those mortises a bit too wide, but it should be okay. Should be okay. So there you go, that's scratched around there. And then we've got to get the depth of that groove as well, which I haven't even measured yet. Seven and a half. So then from the shoulder line, you measure seven and a half millimeters there. I should have used a knife for that, but oh well. Marking gauge to that line. 
scratch around the top, scratch around here, scratch around here, and then you can see we have got sort of an L-shaped tenon. So that top bit is going to fit in the groove that I've already cut, and then that little bit on the bottom is going to fit within the mortise that I was just spending all that time cutting out. So I'm going to do that on all the components, and then we'll start cutting them out. Sorted. That <laughs> flew over your shoulder then. Yeah, I've done this a little bit wrong. I did wonder, you had some doubts in your voice. Yeah, you? it's because the tenon's actually going to be very small in this. Um, if in doubt, glue? Oh, glue will hold it, absolutely. It's not like there's going to be any stress on the door either. Oh wait, that's why, it's because I drew the horns to the wrong way. Oh, no, that make it. That'll make it. No, that's right. It, it's exactly, it's the right principle. It's just right. I did it to the wrong line. So when cutting these tenons, the only bit you will actually see is the little haunch poking out the top of it. The rest of this, the beauty of mortise and tenons is that they're completely hidden. So all the lines in here, I'm gonna to cut to straight with the saw. And then this one on top, I'm gonna to leave about a millimeter of material and then chisel back to it so that that line is really nice and crisp. So let's get this up in here. Use my lovely bad axe saw again. I'm gonna say this in every episode, I think. <laughs> okay, I'll flip it around that way so I can actually see what's going on with the haunch. edges off. Oh. oh, that's rubbish. Okay, so we got the width there. I think that will require a little bit of chiseling. So now I've still got that gauge line on the end, so I need to cut off that corner there and then the gauge line on the top as well, which will come down to that. So I need to cut all that bit off now. That was a good one. That was a good one. There we go. So a little bit of material on the end. So that's the bit that we're going to see. So in the vise, wide chisel, mallet. And then I've just got the shoulder lines to clean up as well. Let's see how that is now. It might go straight in. It might be a bit tight. Yeah, so it's a bit too tight for the time being, so I've got to take a bit off that front edge where I didn't quite hit the line with the saw. So I'll just lay this flat in the vise and then pair that away. on the other side. Basically, I'm just gonna keep refining this until it fits into that mortise.
quite so earlier, I didn't make it too clear as to why I've only done half the frames here. It's because my mitosaur over there doesn't have a fence and a stop on it, which means that I'm cutting these to a knife line, which means there's a chance for these to be slightly different heights. I did check this afterwards, but there's always a few that sneak through without me noticing. So what we may have here after assembling these is a few components that are all different heights. So what we're gonna do is take number one and I'll make that my template. Have I got a pencil anywhere? No. I'll make it my template to mark the shoulder lines on the opposite one. What are you marking? Satisfying the music's already started. For God's sake. Where have I put it? This is falling down. Okay, and I need my ken knife as well, which is definitely around here somewhere because I was using that earlier. Oh my lord! <laughs> We're just... So the first one I'm going to mark to be 20 millimetres with the marking gauge. So 20 millimetres there. Okay, so then that is our template. Shall I put a nice old T on it? So yeah, I can't use a marking gauge for the rest of them because that is just going to, if the component's larger, then it's going to create a 20 millimetre offset on the larger component, but the shoulder lines will still be longer or shorter or whatever. So, with that as a template, I get the next one. Put it up against that. Make sure the shoulder lines on this side match up. Like that. And then, with my knife, mark from the template to the other shoulder line. And then I'll set a marking gauge up to that, scratch it round, get the next component, set it up to my template mark it and keep scratching it around like that. And that will ensure the distance between the two shoulder lines are exactly the same and therefore the doors are the same after assembly. Don't try this at home, kiddies. Do you know what I'm doing? I believe you're building a gun. <laughs> Would I be wrong? <laughs> no, you're picking up bullets. Okay, so that is the door frames made and they're looking nice. I will be doing a video on this in the future in more depth. I realize that I've kind of skimmed over this a little bit. The reason for that is because the plans, I sized the tenons, I sized the mortises to fit these perfectly. And if you follow the plans, you'll find it very easy. But because I've changed the dimensions unintentionally of the rails, it's meant that the tenons are all the wrong dimensions and like, it's just not, it won't be a good tutorial. So that'll be something I'll be doing in the future. But what we need to do now is start making or start cutting to size the see-through panel that is gonna fit in this section here. One thing I will say about frame and panel door construction before I start assembling this and before my upcoming tutorial that I will do at some point in the future, whatever size your panel that fits within this groove is, that is what's gonna dictate the size of the tenon that goes within that style. So for this, I had a four millimeter panel, which meant it was very difficult to try and cut out these mortises because they were four millimeters wide. I had to use my 3.2 millimeter chisel, get in there and like, 
it was like surgery in the end. So it's a lot easier if you size this to make it a six or a five millimeter panel because it's generally easier to get chisels that will fit in that better. Uh, but yeah, something to bear in mind. So to get this panel sized, I'm just gonna measure the distance between here and here, which is about 489. It's a weird size. So it'll be 489 plus the depth of the groove, which 489, which is about seven millimeters on either side because I just shoved it through the router table at whatever setting it was. Uh, I'm not gonna make this panel a perfect fit in here. I'm gonna leave about, uh, I don't know, a millimeter play in it, just so when I assemble it, I've got no weird surprises where the panel is gonna be resisting the joints going together. So let's say I'll add 13 onto that or something like that. So that makes that 400, oh my Lord. I've got the pressure of Rob watching me now. Five hundred and two. Yes. And then to get the width of the panel, all you've got to do is measure from haunch to haunch because that is the exact size of the groove widthways. So if I just pop that in there, sort of got a little lip poking up above it there. So that is two hundred and six. So I'll cut it to. 205 or something like that and then that will give me a millimeter play so 502 by 205 is what i need to cut the panels to this bit's in 50 fps rob It's me, Rob. Yeah, Matt didn't turn on his microphone for this bit, so I'm gonna have to voice over for him. But I can tell you what he's on about. I mean, woodworking's easy. He's got some plastic for the top half of his cabinet. However, the bottom half deserves something extra special. And I mean extra special. The question is, what material is he gonna use? Is it gonna be Paduke? Nope. Is it gonna be Wenge? Nope. Is it gonna be this mystery green timber that I've got no idea what it is? Nope. Is it gonna be this lovely burr material that I've got? Nope, it's gonna be OSB. Thank you very much. Because you know, the more people who insult my use of OSB in the workshop, the more, the more it encourages me to use it in unnecessary places. And I'm talking these panels in this lovely frame of panel, traditional construction cabinet. OSB, it's gonna look beautiful here, don't you think? So unlike the plasticky material that's due to go in the section up here, the OSB is 12 millimeters thick, which means I need to create some sort of tongue on the outside of it to fit within this rebate. I want to keep the thickness of the OSB at 12 millimeters to retain its strength and make sure I can't just punch through this thing if I was to plane it all down to four millimeters thick. So 12 millimeters thick in the middle with a five millimeter, sorry, a four millimeter tongue round the outside. So if I'm to draw this out real quick, we have got a 15 millimeter thick door rail thing, whatever that is, with a groove in it. And then we've got a 12 millimeter OSB panel sitting in that. So because they're different thicknesses, I am going to be offsetting the OSB towards the front of the door. Now, what you normally do with frame and panel doors and just when you're putting panels within a frame is you sometimes put a little chamfer 
here, which basically disguises any gaps or unevenness once that panel is within the frame. Because if this was to shift a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right and you haven't cut it to the exact size, then you're gonna get like a millimeter or a half millimeter gap there and then it will be completely closed on the other side. So by creating a little 45 degree angle around the outside of that panel before the tongue, then it kind of disguises any little gap like that and it just gives a pretty neat look overall. And this is something that I did on this oak toolbox. You can see we've got a solid wood panel in here within a solid wood frame. And in this case, the reason I've left a gap around the outside is to allow this top panel to expand and contract because that's what solid wood does. But what I've done to disguise that gap is add a little 45 degree chamfer around the entire thing. So if I was to accidentally make this side two millimeters wide of a gap and then that side three, that chamfer just kind of blends it all in so you don't really notice it. And apart from functionality, it makes it look pretty sweet as well. Okay, and it's that time of day again where we've got to do a bit of maths. <laughs> I think it's definitely time on this channel to have a maths with Matt section because it's just, it must make for terrible viewing. Maths with Matt. Anyway, so I'm gonna just quickly draw this panel again. Wow, that's terrible. Anyway, so we've got a 15 millimeter thick style, frame, whatever, with a four millimeter groove in it, which means either side of that four millimeter groove, we've got 11 millimeters left over, which will mean these are 5.5. So if I want to make that panel flush with the front, that means this step here obviously has to be 5.5. That is going to be a four point, wait, what am I talking about? That's gonna be a four millimeter tongue, which means 12 millimeters left over. So that's 9.5, that's going to be two, 0.5 there wow that's incredibly thin that's incredibly thin cool Maths with Matt. but before we go any further with this can we just take a moment to appreciate the pure versatility of osb look at this you've got a choice of gnarly or you've got a choice of pretty smooth pretty um you know pretty simple gnarly smooth i've got options here this is such an awesome material what am i going to choose in fact what i should be asking what's going to stir up the haters more i think gnarly is isn't it yeah gnarly gnarly dudes so with the gnarly side up as my face side i'm going to make that I don't know, just do a face side mark on it like that. So when I do this, I'm obviously gonna be doing 5.5 millimeters down from the front to create that rebate. So I need to make sure that that face side is down on each of those. And then once I do the 2.5, that face side will allow me to see which way's up and just make sure I cut that rebate on the correct side. So I've sized this so the tongue is six millimeters long. So I'm gonna do that with the fence in place. Yeah, nice. So I'll probably set it too shallow to begin with and then just edge it back as I go to make sure I get the exact depth that I need. Uh, bear in mind that the groove is seven millimeters deep. So by making this six, I'm ensuring that the shoulders of the rebate are going to bottom out before the end of the tunders and then create an uneven gap or even more of an uneven gap. And then to put that chamfer on, I'm just gonna wrap a bit of 80 grit around a hard block. And I'll just do it by hand, to be honest. Doesn't need to be anything massive. You could also do this on the router table. But I think that'll do. I might actually end up doing it on the router table. Yeah. Mm. Eh, shoulder plane. Let's try that. See what that does. Ugh. This is gonna make more people cringe. Veritas shoulder plane on OSB. It's a plane for God's sake. 
That is actually working beautifully. Oh, yes. Spot on. Should have counted the number of strokes I took, but plain it is. And then I'll soften it with the sandpaper afterwards. That's much better, that. Beautiful. Right, let's see if it fits in the panel. Or should I say fit within the frame? All right. Racing forward. Good start. It's looking good. What's that? Three. No. Uh, four. 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 Oh, I keep looking at that seven thinking it's a four. That was the right one. What's going on here? One, two, two. Oh, it's because there's four uprights. There's not two of them, is there? There we go. That's what I'm after. That one. Oh, yes. That looks amazing. That looks amazing. It's going to stir so many people up. Yeah? How about that? Whew. Clean chamfer around the whole thing. I personally think that looks beautiful. Rob, I'm just going to time lapse me assembling these doors. I'll do a quick talky bit and then we'll do a big old montage of sanding everything. At, nearly. Sanding everything and then gluing it. And that'll be about it, really. You can have dinner after that. All right, so with this fully assembled, what I need to do before gluing it together is pre-sand some of the areas, similar to what I did with the inside of the cabinet, uh, just to, I'm not gonna be able to get access to them after it's assembled. So that will be the inside of these door frames. I'll just sort of buzz over those real quick, make sure there's no tear out on them. I'll probably pre-sand these panels, I think, just, just because, um, and, yeah, inside door frames, panels, that's about it, really. And then once I've done that, we'll glue it together using Type Bond 2, and I'll make sure that the doors are all sitting square, or should I say rectangular, square in a construction kind of way. And yeah, once we've done that, that's about it, really.
Okay, and then as with any glue up, you always want to be doing a dry fit. A dry fit being a assembly without any glue in it to check that there's not any anything that's gonna surprise you once you've got glue on it. So we'll do that, quick dry fit, check everything's okay, check the diagonals are the same size to ensure the doors are actually going together squared and not this sort of shape. So I'll do that, then chuck some glue on it and we'll be done. This is the time-lapse, Rob. Okay, so it's all glued up. They're all square and everything. I just wanted to show you this real quick. We've got this bottom panel here, larger gap at the top, small gap at the bottom, if any. The other nice thing about that 45 degree chamfer is you can pop a ruler in it and you can actually get a bit of leverage on it. And as long as that panel is securely clamped, there we go. You can see you kind of got a little bit of give in it so that you can centralize that panel and then the squeeze out from these joints should be gluing the four corners of that in place. So I need to move a little bit from left to right as well. So I'll just get it in here. Very light pressure when you're doing this. The last thing you want to do is chip it up. But now that's looking pretty even in there. And that I think is where we will call it for today's episode. Plenty of progress made today. Two doors done, frame and panels, mortise and tenons, the lot. Very, very good progress. So in the next video, we will be hinging these to the cabinet. I'll actually be cleaning it up in the next episode because I didn't quite have time today. So yeah, we'll get them hinged and yeah, this is gonna look pretty cool. So if you liked the video, don't forget to press that little like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video. No dab for you today, Rob, no dab. <laughs> <laughs>